Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Well, we have some very bad news to report that uh, he Heek now is becoming much more uh, a dangerous area in the sense of that they just found four bodies buried right along the roadside on the main street between Ahihik and Chapala and uh, other sites that they have found the investigators have un dug up uh, six more bodies at a different area west of Ahihik and then last month they raided a house where they actually had people that were being held captive and they freed the people so it's really a strange situation here well, you know what's interesting about it, living here, the town looks normal. We walk around, we don't, we don't see anything, it doesn't look scary, uh, people are friendly. So, you read about this stuff in the newspaper, but we don't see it or anything. And so, it's quite interesting and shocking that when something like that happens, and as many of bodies that have been shown in the last month or month and a half, it really is shocking. Now, Lori, let me ask you a question. When you hear stories like that about people being buried and uh, that there have been killings here, as a woman, how do you feel about it? You know, in your day-to-day, -day, you know, life down here, what, how do you feel about that? Well, day-to-day -day life here, I feel like normal. Because why I say that? Because I don't read newspaper, I don't watch the TV, so. I didn't, I didn't know much about the new, and to me, I think everywhere else would be the same, you know, but I just feel okay. Okay, so you know, that's an excellent point, is that, yeah. you know, you hear about killings in the major cities, and that, and people don't freak out about it, and so, uh, that's quite normal in that respect. You, you know, let's say New York or Chicago or LA or Philadelphia, wherever it is, you hear about killings. Now here, because it's a small community and you hear about it, and the difference is, is that it is a little more shocking because they are actually are burying them and, uh, and so the investigators have to dig them all up and then uh, uh, so that seems a little weird. So it's a little different in that respect. But yeah, kind of spooky in other way. But you know, what can you do? Yeah, what can you do? Because that's the way it is, unfortunately. And it's not something that happens every week. Uh, so, uh, but that's just what we want to do is we want to report to you what's happening here. I'd like to make a clarification. The article that I'm describing here was in the Guadalajara Reporter, but it didn't tell how long the bodies have been buried. They could have been two weeks ago, which most of us think that, but it could have been three or four, five, six years ago. So the article did not say that, what time frame that the uh, bodies and how long they have been buried. Today, Chapala, Ahihik uh, and the surrounding lake area has reopened after two weekends of close down. All the parks have been closed, the restaurants, the businesses, any activities have been closed down. Today is the reopening. Let's go check it out. Okay, now we're in Ahihik Plaza and uh, first day that it has opened up. And so let's take a look at, uh, over here on my right here behind me is the uh, black and white coffee. And so people are starting to come and having coffee. And then let's go over here to uh, the restaurant. And uh, so, yeah, it does, it, so you know, it's, it's interesting because it's been closed and everything. All the vendors, all the people like to my right here, there's a musician and he's singing, he brought his guitar, he's trying to make some extra money. So here, let's swing around and show him what the guitar guy looks like here. And uh, there he is. So he's, uh, you know, this is what happens here. So he's lightened up, people are happy that they can 
and they start, you know, getting back to their normal. And uh, of course, we're wearing our masks because that's our normal. Let's take a look at Hardeen's restaurant and see what it looks like. Well, one of the ironic things that happens here, uh, because Mexico, at least in uh, Jalisco here, it's opened up. So now everybody is excited about it. So they come out in much more, uh, you know, excitement. So the malls get much more crowded. Uh, restaurants, even so they may have social distancing, gets crowded. And so, uh, because they've been, you know, cooped up in their house for two weeks and not being able to get out. and so. It doesn't really help a lot because the virus then is spreading because everybody now has come out and uh, wants to uh, you know do a little bit more of the socializing thing and uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, numbers if they do level out uh, a little bit more it has been good for the last two weeks they have found that the numbers have dropped significantly and so that's why they've re reopened up uh, the uh, area here and throughout Jalisco, Mexico. Did you hear that they spotted an alligator or a crocodile in Lake Chapala? Guess what? They have alligator. I don't know what to say alligator to Clary. I always say crocodile. So we have crocodile in a lake and it's only one crocodile. Somebody was let it go and then I was uh, so disappointed, you know, and then now they tried to catch that crocodile. Before it was only like a 15,000 peso to if somebody catch it. And now the government is say 25,000 peso, whoever catch a crocodile. I would wonder how they can catch a crocodile. This lake was so big, 15 miles wide and then 50 miles long. And there's just one crocodile in the lake, you know, how are they going to catch that? And who's going to catch that? It's going to be amazing. And then also, I would say, whoever let that crocodile go in the lake, why don't they have a brain to thinking to take to the zoo? Why you put it in the lake? It's a dangerous to the public. You know, it was a small, you know, but they grow bigger. They might eat the fish. If they eat the fish, it was okay. But if they eat some children swimming in the lake, that's very very scary to me. Well, last week I asked people if they had some suggestions on what information they'd like to know about here. Well, one of the questions that somebody asked, they asked, is it safe to uh, swim in the lake? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on that. And to be 100%, you know, to answer that 100% correct is that I don't know. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is, is that normally people do not swim in the lake. You'll get the little kids occasionally swimming in the lake, but it's not like, you know, a bunch of kids will come down on a Sunday and maybe teenagers, you know, lay out their blankets out on the beach part of it and swim in the lake. They don't do that. So another person asks, what about fishing in the lake? Is there good fishing because they like to fish? Uh, we don't have things like bass or anything. Now, I'm not a fisherman, so the only thing I can report is that the only people that are out there fishing are the local fishermen. They go out and they do, they have nets or they have traps out there. But tilapia is usually the fish that they catch there, huh, Lori? What is it they? Yeah, they, they catch some tilapia, uh, tilapia and the catfish. Catfish, okay. And some other white fish, I don't know the name. Like a three or four kind of a fish that are edible here in in the Lake Kepala. Okay, so you eat the fish, huh, Lori? Yeah, I eat the fish. Okay. It's safe to eat. Well, if a poison, I died already. <laughs> yeah, right. You've been eating it for 12 years now. Yeah. Well, so, another question they get asked here is, what's the proportion of single people? Well, what I've heard is that there's about six single women to each man and so 
the uh, that's about the percentage is here. Now remember, we're in our in our age group down here. We're talking typically between 60 years and older, and so if you're looking at uh, you know wanting a relationship, that's who you're going to be uh, associating with here. Another question that somebody asked. They says. Jerry, you report a lot of positive things about the area there. What are some of the negative things that day-to-day, uh, -day, you know, you, uh, you know, come up against? Well, one of the things that we talk about is that there's dog poop. There's dog crap in the street. People do not pick it up. It's not in their uh, nature or their custom to pick it up. And so you'll get it on the sidewalk. You'll get it on the street. So that's really quite annoying a lot of times. Even down to the foreigners here, a lot of times you'll see them walking their dog and the dog will take a crap and, and they don't even carry a bag and pick it up. So uh, uh, another thing that's a little frustrating here is that when you want to hire, typically a lot of times when the Mexican says manana, uh, that doesn't mean tomorrow. Manana means whenever well you probably have heard us talk about it in videos so maybe you uh have a gardener that says he'll be there tomorrow at 10 o'clock he may not show up generally that's what happens with contractors they don't always follow through with making an appointment with you or following up an appointment they made. but one of the things that another thing that is a little bit annoying is the internet it can be in different areas very slow uh, you may not have a consistent, you know, uh, signal going on. Another thing that is a little bit frustrating, uh, a lot of the homes that you are in, they don't want you to flush your uh, toilet paper down the toilet. And so they have a little basket over there. That, again, annoys a lot of people. They feel it's very unsanitary. Of course, you got to be careful about drinking the water. Uh, we get bottled water, purified bottled water, and even that isn't perfect. And we've just been noticing that some of our water, if we're using a water dispenser, inside the little uh, uh, reservoir there, if, if we don't clean it out every time with bleach, we can see a little bit of green, you know, growing on it. So even the purified water isn't that purified. Now, I'm talking about big bottles that we get. Uh, I'm not talking about little bottles that you would get in a store. So that can be a little bit of annoying. <laughs> it's hard for me, you know, to think of what's annoying here. I I guess what we do, we used to already. Yeah. So we kind of say, oh, that's normal. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Mexico. That, yeah. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Viva la Mexico. <laughs> Hola. Lori here. Nothing to do, just lay on the grass. If you ask me question, I have no answer. Because I don't know the answer. That's why I don't answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> all in all, it's hard for us to say, you know, what's uh, annoying or not annoying because we don't see it as annoying. You know, a lot of the stuff, we just accept it as it is. Uh, even down to the dog poop. We just accept it. We've traveled to a lot of third world countries where we've seen a lot of dog poop in the street. So we just accept it. So that's a little hard question for me to answer uh, all in all. Well, if you have a question or you would like us to make a video, something that we haven't made before. You know, we have like three, actually we have 470 videos I think I saw. Uh, we have a lot of them. And so a lot of them we made years ago, and uh, the content is there, but you'd have to really search the archives to be able to find it. So if there's a video you would like us to make, please let us know, and then we can create something for you. And ask any questions, and then I'd like to be able to answer them for you personally. And subscribe. <laughs> Thumbs up. We're trying to get our subscription up. And so... Uh, Help us out by subscribing. We would appreciate that. Pass it on to your friends on social media. 